Varsity Band with our national anthem here at Madison Square Garden in New York. This is Marv Albert with Bucky Waters and Howard David. A look at the officials with the basketball on the far side, Larry Lembo of the ECAC, and on the near side, Pete Hubbia, also of the ECAC. Purdue in the white uniform and the light uniform on your screen, and Indiana in the dark uniform wearing the red. And it'll be number 45, Ray Tober, six foot nine sophomore, jumping against number 22, seven foot one center, Joe Barry Carroll. And the Boilermakers of Purdue control Jerry Seasting coming off the superb game against Alabama. This is Arnett Hallman, who was a doubtful starter, and here's Brian Walker, and an offensive foul is called. As expected, Indiana, tough man for man. The real challenge for Bobby Knight's Hoosiers is to keep that ball from going into the franchise. Joe Barry Carroll, 42 in the semifinals, and he had the pro scouts salivating. On 16 for 19 from the floor. Art the Hoosiers, record of 21 up, 12 down, in possession. 41 is Butch Carter. And Tober gives Indiana a 2 to nothing lead. Going inside, challenging the big guy. Tolbert, not known as a great offensive player, very physical, plays above the rim, touch looked good that time. Drake Morris with the baseline maneuver. And here is Seasting. And rebounded by Indiana's Mike Woodson. Averaging 21.3 per ball game. A junior out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Bobby Knight says he is vastly underrated. Here is Tolbert. And Butch Carter, number 41. Randy Whitman. As we set the Hoosiers of Indiana. Carter, rebounded by Seasting of Purdue. Indiana very patient on offense. I'm not quite sure what that Purdue defense is, but it's sloughing. Here is Seasting. Yes. And we're tied at two. Purdue in pressure. Full court man for man. Backcourt of Carter with it. And Whitman. And this is Randy Whitman. And Mike Woodson. What's it on the miss? And a slam home. A pushing foul on Tolbert, making up his first personal foul. Third meeting of the season between Indiana and Purdue and Big Ten play, each one a close, low scoring ball game. Each victory at home, Indiana winning 63 54, Purdue winning 55 48. Purdue, the tri champions of the Big Ten, sharing the title with Michigan State and Iowa, and the top ranked defensive team of the Big Ten. Here is Carroll and that swarming defense causing the turnover, but he was out of bounds. Randy Whitman on the baseline. Joe Barry Carroll should have warmed up with Indiana. He's been wearing at least one Indiana jersey so far all night. Bobby Knight had said he was hoping that uh, Purdue would use Joe Barry as a decoy. No chance. There is Seaston. Yes. At a score to two, the Boilermakers for Purdue on top. Tolbert is an easy outlet against the Purdue pressure because Joe Barry Carroll's not going to come down the court, so that takes the pressure off the Indiana guards. This is Butch Carter, guarded by Jerry Seasting. Sloppy pass, but it's kicked out of bounds. Last touch by Drake Morris of Purdue. I had the feeling as I watched Joe Barry Carroll score 42 the other night, if he's going to get 42 against Bobby Knight's defense, he may make the last 20 on his back. Although he has averaged 20 points a game and 10 rebounds in the first two meetings. Carter was looking for Woodson, couldn't find him. Here's Tolbert outside against Carroll. Now Carter. And here's Woodson off the turn. Randy Whitman. Yes. And we're tied at four. Whitman is a six foot five freshman out of Indianapolis, a starter since the fourth game of the season. Backcourt of Seasting and Walker. This is Barnes. And Holman rejected, but Seasting recovers. Look out, puts Carter, comes away with it. And 
Woodson. For Mike Woodson, who hit for 20 against Ohio State, off a strong second half of the semifinal game here on Monday night, his first field goal. The fact that Woodson didn't even make honorable mention All-American really is a travesty. He's a fine basketball player. He plays a defensive guard and offensive forward. He and Carter switched those two positions. Well, Joe Barry Carroll had to work for that shot, and he also took a pop on the forehead. Six apiece now. Joe Barry got clobbered. It's a contact sport in there. The referees are letting them play, which is typical in national competition. We are four minutes in, first half. Butch Cotter, watched by Jerry Seaston. Turner back for Cotter with some room. And it's 8-6, the Hoosiers of Indiana on top. Indiana's always patient. Purdue has played a lot of zone. Their most productive defense has been a 2-3. There, there's some gimmicks going on in there right now, and I haven't been smart enough to figure it out. It hasn't bothered Indiana. All right, the steal by Woodson. Beautiful move. Woodson made the turn, but he went off the back iron. And here's Walker back. Took off a little too soon that time. Even the good players should use the backboard. Indiana with the 8-6 lead. Nice pass. Landon Turner, a 54% shooter with his first field goal. And the Hoosiers lead by four, 10-6. For a Bobby Knight team, they're pushing the ball up the floor rather quickly. This isn't traditional. Offensive foul, and a timeout has been called. Moving into the pack, nothing but red shirts in the lane, definitely a charge. The position defense of Bobby Knight drew one that time. And we'll return to the NIT after this brief pause. Time will present the college academic All-America team and the high school All-America team. Lee Rose led the University of North Carolina at Charlotte to this final game three years ago with a guy named Cornbell Maxwell. And of course, leading the Sun Belt Conference, uh, which is a very new league and off to a terrific start. And Lee Rose is the first man in the history of the NIT to coach in the uh, championship game with two different teams. That last foul was committed by Jerry Seasting before we broke for the timeout. Indiana in possession. They lead it by the score of 10-6. Here's Woodson off the turn, looking for glass rejected by Carroll. Indiana fans looking for a goal 10. They do not get the call. Ryan Walker. And the foul. As Carroll came together with Tolbert, the foul is called. The good move by Woodson, Joe Barry Carroll goes up and rejects. That is number 69 for the season. It won't be the last tonight. On the other hand, Carroll just picked up his first personal foul. So Indiana moving back, led by Randy Whitman. He comes off a five for six shooting performance against Ohio State on Monday. Here's Woodson, number 42. And Whitman. Tolbert looking to get it back out. Six minutes gone by, first half, and Indiana by four, 10-6. That lead pass overthrown by Cotter on the turnover. Purdue will get it back. Arnett Holman, the six foot seven junior who wears number 45, was a doubtful starter for today because of a twisted ankle. He has been matched for the most part against Mike Woodson. Did not warm up, but uh, has been playing right throughout as Joe Barry Carroll was just hacked by opposing center Ray Tolbert. His second personal foul. The big guy making his move, turning back over the left shoulder, look clean from the top, but a little bit with the body. After he gets the ball, you're in real trouble, especially with that hook shot, because after it leaves his hand, it's illegal to block it. It's on its way down. Carroll emerging as one of the most dominating centers in the country and has uh, created quite a stir here in New York because he will not talk to the media. He has followed through on this right throughout his three-year career. 
at Purdue. And the guessing has been, should Purdue win today? And should he have a big ball game? Will he talk tonight? I talked to the silent giant. He's a very articulate young man. In fact, he went down to the New York Stock Exchange. And if he has many more 42-point nights, I'd like to be his broker. He's going to be a very big investor. Or his agent. Or all of the above. All right, the foul is called on Sistine. Foul by Mike uh, check that Mike foul. Scarce, number 23, committed the foul. The penetrating defense really hanging in the air, drew the foul. I don't think he would have made the shot even without the foul. Here is Woodson, and rebounded by Carroll. <laughs> Purdue trailing by four, 10-6. Walker looking for Seasting. Gets it out for Mars. And this is Brian Walker, 6'5", sophomore from Lebanon, Indiana. Now Seasting. And Scarce. They will jump it up, says Larry Lumbo. Last touch by both Indiana and Purdue. Scarce is a good shooter. The 6'7 freshman from Lexington, Kentucky, is part of the connections that Lee Rose still has back in his home state. Now here is Arnett Holman, number 45, coming on, replacing Drake Morris. Morris did not score. So Holman is back, 6'7 junior out of Chicago, Illinois, averaging eight per ball game. Purdue controls the tap. Here's Walker. And Holman. Indiana bench looking for a travel. Intense pressure on the guards. Indiana's trying to pressure those guards to really deny the pass inside. Make it tough. All right, Seasting with a nice pass. The uh, shot by Scarce was knocked away. And we get the call from Pat Pavia. It is Seasting committing the offensive foul. That's his second. It's a charge all the way, but if you think this isn't an intense rivalry, check the contact under the basket. Marv, I wouldn't go under there without a tetanus shot. They are hitting. Both teams are really up. All right, the steal by Walker, and he is clever. Whitman could not find anyone off the pressure defense of the Boilermakers of Purdue, and Bobby Knight is upset. <laughs> the man in the... Look Looks like a tablecloth. Walker very quick to transfer from North Carolina State. Challenges the big guys, and boy, did he take his lumps. That foul committed by Butch Carter. And here is Brian Walker, transfer out of North Carolina State. He has come on as Purdue's playmaker, had nine assists Monday night against Alabama. A 72% foul shooter. And Purdue now trailing by two, 10-8. Pretty evasive in an interview. They asked him to compare the Big Ten and the ACC, which is an ongoing rivalry. All he would say was the ACC is more offensive conscious, the Big Ten more defense. Here's Carter from long range. His second field goal. Indiana 12 and Purdue 8. We have 12 minutes left on this first half. Marv Albert, Bucky Waters, and Howard David from Madison Square Garden, New York. The 42nd Annual National Invitation Tournament, and this the final game. And the battle for third place earlier tonight, Alabama defeated Ohio State 96-86. Carroll is in, and he's blocked by Colbert. That one didn't get out of his hand. As I say, you've got to get it before it leaves his hand, because it's down. Joe Barry having a tough time of it here in the first half. One point should be made. He usually starts very cautious. Coach Rose has a rule. After he gets his second foul in the first half, he has to sit down. He doesn't want him to start the second half with three fouls. Ray Colbert providing Indiana with a six-point lead. Here is Scarce. Oh, a hammer oh. hole by Arnett Homer. How's that for a bad ankle? Scarce taking the jumper, goes off the iron. Oh, my. Here comes Holman, spears it at the top, and puts it through. From Madison Square Garden, this is the 42nd Annual NIT. We'll be right back. Ray Tolbert, the 6'9 sophomore. Pulls one on Joe Barry, not normally rejected. 
but he was that time a super play. We told you Tolbert plays above the rim. That's a pretty good demonstration. Indiana by four, 14 to 10, 11 minutes, 14 seconds remaining in this first half, and it's Indiana in possession. Once again, Whitman having difficulty unbounding, gets it in for Carter, who's being pressured. Now Whitman watched by Walker, and Carter moves it down. The Hoosiers record of 21 and 12 during the regular season came on late after a slow start and have gotten off fast here in the first half. Turner can take uh, Carroll outside. He has pretty good touch and pretty good range. This is Carter. Back for Whitman. And Whitman pops. Holman not able to control. And Woodson recaptured. The Purdue guards are looking to release. One of the things about Indiana's offense is their guards get down inside, which is all right because they're big. But they have to be careful for that long pass because Joe Barry Carroll can throw it. Oh, a nice move by Landon Turner. He is a six foot nine freshman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. And Indiana by six, 16 to 10. It would be a good move to go to him now because, as we pointed out, Carroll does not play aggressively early in the game because of his concern for fouls. That is Scarce. Mike Scarce with his first field goal. Keith Edmondson, a 6'5 freshman wearing number 11, has come on for Purdue. Lee Rose does a lot of shuffling. Bobby Knight with a nine-man squad and usually plays seven people. Well, Scarce is not a freshman anymore. He had 24 against Dayton in the NIT. He's their designated shooter. Woodson throws back out. This is Turner. And now Woodson. Whitman does not use the pick. Four-point lead for Indiana. Here's Connor and Whitman. Woodson with the step. And it was deflected away. Edmondson for Walker. And a fast break for Purdue. Indiana able to get back. This is Edmondson who just checked in. And scarce. I'm surprised with how much man for man Purdue is playing. They're usually his own team. Carroll was bottled up, but contact made at the foul call. Woodson committing his first personal as we get another look. All the red jerseys. A tough pass to make. A very tough pass to make. If you get down inside, you better go straight up with it because there's no room to bounce it and very little room to pass it. Nine minutes left, first half. The steal by Indiana. Nice feed from Carter. Woodson not able to hit. Turner. And rebounded by Carroll. Here's Walker leading the break. Once again, Whitman got back quickly. And Walker could not take it to the hoop. Now Walker with the baseline move out for Carroll. And Carroll takes it. Up. Oh, the Indiana bench in a rage of Smith. They were looking for the offensive foul on Carroll and obviously did not get the call. Fortunately, we could not read lips. I think Bobby Knight had a case there. The big guy takes that big step. Very difficult to pull up. Whitman tried to throw the needle. And a foul is called. And Bobby Knight is still very upset. No question about it. No question about it. Good position there. <laughs> he didn't get the call, and he's still looking for the license number. He stopped 7'1", 245 pounds. And if Pavia can explain now in the Bobby Knight, he should be a lawyer. All right, Scarce, come out of that last foul right here. Let's pause for a moment for these messages from your local station. Bobby Knight is mad, and this is why. Butch Carter coming off the weak side, feet firmly planted in the lane, and number 41 meets 7-1. 240 pounds, and he almost knocked Carter all the way back to Middletown, Ohio, and they've turned out some good ones, like Jerry Lucas. All right, off the inbounds as we resume. Turner not able to hit. Jerry Seasting back in for Purdue, moving down. 
16-14. Indiana leading Purdue by two in the NIT championship game. Scarce going short, but follows nicely. And pops one. It's put home by Carroll. And we're tied at 16. It wasn't a very good shot, and it turned out to be an assist. Must be nice to have that big guy up there making all the mistakes count. For Carroll, his second field goal has four. 7.40 left first half. Turner. A pretty hook shot by Landon Turner, his third field goal. Indiana by two, 18-16. He certainly isn't intimidated by Carroll. He is really turning and wheeling. Hallman gets it out for Scarce. Still looking for that shot. He's been way off, but keeps firing away. Tolbert on the rebound, and now here's Whitman bringing up. Indiana with the ball and a two-point lead. Whitman watched by Seasting. Now Tolbert. Turner missing on that tip attempt. And this is Edmondson of Purdue. Purdue's offense is doing an excellent job. The screens are good. They're not only getting Carroll free in there, which is difficult to do against that collapsing defense, but their screens are freeing the outside shooters. Seasting has not had much of an opportunity. Whitman's done a good job on it, but Scarce has been getting the good shot. Steal by Turner, fast break opportunity for Tolbert. Three field goals, six points for Ray Tolbert. This isn't a dunk, it's a gouge. Carter lead pass, Tolbert. Nothing but strings and with velocity. And with Tolbert drilling at home, he shook up those cords. Larry Lumbo tried to straighten out the uh, cords at the uh, Indiana end. We'll get a shot of it when we get back to the other end of the court. They may never be the same, Mark. Indiana by four, 20 to 16. Here is Edmondson. Kept alive by Holman, who pops one and hits. Arnett Holman, his second field goal, has four. Art, there it is. That is not a fender bender, man. That's a slam. That's the result of the uh, slam by Ray Tolbert. And the foul. The bumping foul is called with Mike Woodson hit as he made the turn. Foul committed by foul Drake Morris. That is his first. And now one and one situation with Purdue picking up its seventh team foul. Indiana has four. And here is Landon Turner. Only a 55% foul shooter. That's a young man who moved into the starting lineup late in the season. Although a, a compound fracture of a small finger in his left hand has hampered his play, has not been hampered thus far tonight here in the first half. A backcourt of Seasting and Edmondson and Morris way off. Purdue shooting has been very poor in the first half, yet they trail by only two. Without Carroll in there, they're taking more perimeter shots, but Carroll's ready to come back in. Purdue down by two, 5.15 left first half. Seasting throws it out. And here's Holman off the pump. They wanted a travel call on the Indiana bench. They do not get it. And here's a four on two led by Woodson. Nice flip, but it's missed by Culver. Kept alive by Whitman. And Woodson again. Rebounded by Neil Niederdorfer, who just came on for Purdue. Demon Doffer 6'10", and he's not a strong inside player, but he can score. Good touch, nice moves around the basket. A finesse a, player, not a power player. Has been effective recently as a forward. Oh, he'll take it. Edmondson off the glass and a foul. You got to call forward when you hit those, otherwise it doesn't count. Followed by Mike Woodson. It was hacked by Woodson, who has collected his second. Indiana has five feet. Joe Barry Carroll. Foul number five committed by Indiana. Joe Barry Carroll is back for the Boilermakers. And to the foul line, Keith Edmondson, a 6'5 freshman out of San Antonio, Texas. He is only six for 12 from the foul line. 
the Purdue people feel he's greatly improved this year. He's always been a good defensive player, not really a good shooter. And Purdue has taken a one-point lead. Brian Walker, number 20, back on for Purdue. At one point, Indiana led by six. Purdue has led by as many as two. That's been it. They've trailed throughout most of this first half. Four and a half left in the first half. And for Woodson, his second field goal has four. Other than Brian Walker's steal early, the Purdue press really hasn't bothered Indiana from the standpoint of other steals. But it is a nuisance, and it's bothering them. They're setting up their offense a little further out than they normally would. The alley-oop. A bit off the mark. Morris on the recovery. Nice move by Craig Morris, his first field goal. And Purdue by one as we seesaw 23 to 22. This is Carter looking for Whitman. Can't find him off the pick. And what's it? Carroll slapping on him along with Colbert. And they say last touched by Carroll. A timeout has been called. We'll return to more NIG basketball after these messages. The beauty of college basketball has been brought to New York City and everybody else. One thing that's been incredible is the attendance. Two Big Ten schools, New York basketball fans have been following it tremendously. They had 15,000 here for the Monday night semifinal doubleheader. And a good crowd here this evening looks to be around 14 or 15 as we resume. 23-22 for two by one, three and a half remaining. In this first half, we have been close right throughout. Purdue in the light uniform wearing the white. This is Jerry Seasting, who has not been able to locate these kind of shots. Seasting connecting for his third field goal, six points. He's some outside shooter. He's been pretty well harnessed so far, but you can look for an explosion anytime. He and, and Carroll exploded for 36 straight points in the semifinals. Straight points by two guys. That's amazing. Landon Turner. We'll go to the foul line. A foul committed by Joe Barry Carroll, who picks up his second. Turner 0 for 1 from the line. Has three field goals for six. Foul to the act. Talk about the closeness of this first half. And the first three rounds of the NIT, 11 of the 20 games played were decided by four points or less. And three of those games went into overtime. The NIT field, starting with the largest ever field, 24 top teams from across uh, the nation scrambling to reach Madison Square Garden. And it turns out to be an all Big Ten final game with Purdue going against Indiana. Purdue by two, 25-23, and in possession. Morris is rejected by Woodson. And Walker throws it on. Seasting, able to beat Turner to it. Nice pass for Morris. I'm here to tell you, Purdue can play some defense, not only at half court, but the quickness of their guards is just amazing. Lee Rose feels like he'd like for them to play about 80%. He's concerned because they play so hard, they just get fatigued. Woodson not able to connect. He has been off. Carroll on the rebound. And this is Brian Walker in deliberate fashion. Walker and Seasting at the guards. Carroll is up front along with Morris, and now Steve Walker in the Boilermaker lineup. Arnett Hallman is getting set to check back in for Purdue. We have 2.05 left in the first half. Purdue went to a 1-2-2 zone that time, and of course, Steve Walker is the brother of Brian Walker. Both of them transferred back to uh, Purdue from North Carolina State. That's his third personal foul. Coming down the middle, wide open, a sensational pass off the quick exchange taking it very very easy Drake Morris lays it in I expected him to jam it that last foul on a reach in by Mike Woodson not a foul that uh, Bobby Knight would appreciate because his third personal foul was picked up 27 23 Purdue with the ball and the lead Walker with a nice stutter step move he had to change the trajectory of that shot, and that required some athletic ability. He was laid straight out, hanging. It was a nine-point dive and a field goal. Six-point lead for Purdue with a minute and a half left in the first half. At one point, Indiana led by six. Knocked away by Walker.
here's a substitution. Steve Risley, six foot eight sophomore, number 34, coming on for the first time, and Woodson will sit down. Keep in mind, Woodson had that strong second half here on Monday night against Ohio State after a slow start. And now Carroll will sit down, and he is replaced by Fiemendorfer. Greg Morris now being waved on, so Lee Rose doing some shuffling here in the final minutes. And Jerry Seesting will sit down. If they go back to the 1-2-2, two, two, by they I mean Purdue, you'll notice Indiana will attack Carroll's side, which is smart. It pulls him out to cover the shooter and leaves Purdue kind of small underneath. Whitman for Rosalyn. Now Carter. And here's Whitman from deep. Risley on the board. All right. Into the crowd from Arnett Holman. Risley with a great reputation for being a strong inside player. Takes this one off the iron. He doesn't get cute with it. He goes right up to Sinuses, and oh, my. He is in traffic, and he still gets it nailed. He was definitely hit. These guys can some kind of jump. Good observation, Buck. Thank you. Bima Durfer, the man who did the hitting, his first personal foul. And here's Steve Risley, a 74% foul shooter. He is a sophomore out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Substitution for the Hoosiers, Scott Eel, 6'9", senior, replacing Ray Colbert. Would you believe that a basketball player, Scott Eels, makes his hometown in Hoopston? Houston, Illinois. Yes, and he's the only senior on this team. So the Big Ten folks better uh, tie on their bonnet because Indiana's going to be around for a while. Purdue by four as we approach the one minute mark here of this first half. Without Carroll in the game, Purdue is holding the ball, trying to extend the Indiana defense, which they really don't like to do. And they're going to hold it for one. And it's pretty good strategy without the big guy. Leroy was a fine coach. He also took that UNCC team to the final four with Cornbread Maxwell. We now have 35 seconds left. This is Greg Mars. And the Walker brothers work it around. This is Brian with it. Back from Mars. That's Steve Walker on it. No backcourt violation, says the official. It was knocked to the backcourt by an Indiana player. We have 18 seconds remaining. Purdue with it. They lead by four. 29-25. Here's Morris. And rebounded by Indiana. Five seconds to go. All right, here's the long-range attempt. Traveling violation was called, though, on Risley. So two seconds left. And it will be Purdue ball at side court. Smart move now. Put the big guy back in with two seconds and throw the ball up to the rim. There's a good chance he would draw a foul anyway. Walker in bounding. And that's the way the first half concludes. So that is the end of the first half with the score. Purdue 29 and Indiana 25. This year, Kerry McDonald, the executive director of the NHS ACA, has done a stellar job in putting our All-America team together. He has worked with the staff of experts all over the country, and they have combed every one of the 50 states to find the finest players they could. Believe me, you'll be hearing from these guys for a long, long time. So without further ado, let us meet the 1979 High School All-Americans. Isaiah Thomas, a six foot, one and a half inch guard from St. Joseph's High in Westchester, Illinois. Averaged over 23 points per game. John Paxson, a 6'2 guard from Alder High School in Kettering, Ohio, an 80% free throw shooter. Dominic Wilkins from Washington High in Washington, North Carolina, a 6'7 center forward, a 58% shooter. Zebedee Howe from Vanguard High School in Ocala, Florida, a 6'7 forward and center, averaged 20 points per game. Sam Bowie from Lebanon High in Lebanon, PA, a 7'1 center, who scored over 2,100 points in his career. Ron Burns from Henry Foss High School in Tacoma, Washington, a seven-foot center who averaged 24.3 a game. Ricky Ross from South High in Wichita, Kansas, a 6'5 guard, a 59% shooter from the field. 
We'll be back with more of our high school All-Americans right after this word from Polaroid. To the caliber of our All-America team comes from the fact that many of our former All-Americans have become stars in their first year of college competition. Our next All-American comes from Birmingham, Michigan, Brother Rice High School, 610 Center, Tim Andry. Byron Scott, a 6'5 guard and forward from Morningside High School in Inglewood, California, who shot 60% as a junior, 55% as a senior. Steven Stepanovich from Desmet Jesuit High School in St. Louis, a 6'11 and 3 quarter inch center. Terry Fair, a 6'7 forward and center from Southwest High in Macon, Georgia, averaged 20.1 points a game. Ralph Sampson, a 7'3 center from Harrisonburg High in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Derek Hord, a 6'7 forward from Tennessee High School in Bristol, Tennessee. Shot over 75% from the free throw line. And finally, Sidney Green, a 6'10 center from Jefferson High School in Brooklyn, New York. Averaged 25 rebounds and six block shots per game. So there you have it, some of the finest young basketball players in America, and they are representative of the best in high school sports. And I just hope as we move into spring sports, like baseball and track and field, we'll continue to give high school athletes the support and credit they deserve. We'll be back with the second half of the NIT championship game right after this. Attention, Track 2 users. Attention, Aptra users. Get ready. The 42nd annual NIT from Madison Square Garden in New York and Purdue leading it 29-25 as we get set for the second half and Larry Lembo getting set to toss it up. Joe Barry Carroll and Ray Tobert on the tip controlled by Purdue. This is Jerry Seasting in the backcourt with Brian Walker. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters and Howard David from the garden. Joe Barry Carroll called for steps. He comes off a two for four shooting performance in the first half. The high point men of the game. No one in double figures. Seven points for Landon Turner of Indiana and six points for Jerry Seasting on three out of four from the floor for Purdue. Six rebounds for Carroll, five for Tobert. 46% shooting from the floor for Purdue, 38% for Indiana. Of course, the key is Woodson is two for 10. On top of that, he has three personal fouls. The only one in the game with three. Landon Turner now with nine points. That's his fourth field goal. One out of three from the line. And it's a two-point Purdue lead. Drake Morris, number 33. Out for Jerry Seasting, who has not been able to find his shots. There's one. Not able to get the rail. And the rebound comes to Randy Whitman of Indiana. Woodson changed his mind. And knocked out of bounds by Purdue. Well, as Bucky mentioned, Woodson, two out of ten from the floor in the first half. And that time, looked to deliver the pass as he had a change of thought. Scramble underneath. Holman, of course, was uh, hanging on the rim at the other end. I think the officials missed it, but he certainly doesn't have a bad ankle. At least not tonight, not in this round. And back live, Woodson able to tie it at 29. A minute 15 gone by, second half. All Big Ten matchup of the NIT final. And the traveling violation has been called. On the subject of the Big Ten, it has been a magnificent year in that conference. They have certainly earned bragging rights with seven of their teams in the top 20. That fast break broken up by Jerry Seasting. Also, you have Michigan State in the Final Four, Indiana and Purdue in the NIT Final. Not bad. We're tied at 29. Opening minutes of play, second half. Nice fake. And Turner able to hit. So we have our first player in double figures, Landon Turner with 11. No question about it. The Big Ten has had a sensational year. They've got five teams going, and here we are right here in the finals, three in the semifinals of the NIT, and, of course, Michigan State vying and maybe a favorite in the, uh, for the final four of the NCAA. And, of course, the controversy goes on about who plays the best basketball, and this year, of course, uh, the Big Ten is holding the trump card. The ACC, of course, is, has been and, and will be a good league. And to paraphrase Mark Twain, who said, the rumors of my demise are greatly exaggerated. 
All right, the tip by Drake Morris. And we're tied at 31. Oh, a pretty follow by Butch Carter. And Indiana by two, 33 to 31. This is Brian Walker. In the backcourt with Jerry Seaston. Morris, back for Seaston. Beautiful whip pass, but Carroll is rejected by Colbert. And the foul. The early momentum is definitely Indiana. Tolbert again coming off from the weak side, coming down the lane, dropping Turner, trying to draw the charge. Tolbert up above the rim, a clean block. It was his power that put the ball on the backboard. And Buck, that his third rejection of the night. That last foul committed by Drake Mars of Purdue. Indiana with the ball, two-point lead, the steal on the deflection by Carroll. And here's Walker with Seasting breaking down, but Walker couldn't find him. Now Carroll. Yes. Joe Barry. So Joe Barry hitting from the outside. That's his third field goal. Has six. And we're tied at 33. Indiana getting it down quickly. Woodson did not have the shot. Tolbert is fouled. Run and two by Holman. Both teams pushing the ball up the floor. Again, Purdue is releasing. Seasting breaking deep, looking for the long pass. And wasn't Carroll impressive in transition, picking the ball up there at the free throw line, putting it on the floor, hitting the jump shot. Amazing, 7-1. Bobby Knight in his eighth year at Indiana has continued Indiana's rich basketball tradition. Ray Tolbert with his seventh point of the night. Indiana, a school that has won 12 Big Ten titles, three NCAA championships with Bobby Knight winning it in 1976, of course, those great undefeated teams back in 75 and 76. Yes, and Purdue has a good basketball tradition. A miss by Walker, but Carroll on the foul. And we're tied at 35. Purdue won the NIT here in 74 under Fred Schaus, the former Laker and West Virginia coach. And we're second in the NCAA, losing to who else in 69? But UCLA under George King, also a former head coach at West Virginia. This is Whitman playing the backcourt with Carter. Now Carter with it. And Whitman fires. Nice position by Arnett Holman of Purdue. Tied at 35, three and a half minutes gone by. Second half. Morris at the shot. Fans behind the basket. And that is an Indiana section looking for the travel call. Nice pass to Carroll. Talbert wisely let that one go. I think if he'd have challenged the big guy, his wrist might still be on the rim. Morris very nearly went under for a two-shot foul, trying to draw that foul. He made a good fake, but you can't move under that man. Fadeaway move by Woodson. So both Woodson and Carroll beginning to heat up, and we're tied at 37. Carroll with only four points at halftime. Woodson with only four. At halftime, Woodson shooting only two out of ten from the floor. This is Walker back out. And here's Holman. He has four field goals, eight points. Not bad for a guy who was a doubtful for today because of that ankle injury. He only played eight minutes against Alabama and did not even practice yesterday. The junior college player is some kind of athlete. Two-point lead for the Boilermakers of Purdue, who come in at 27 up and seven down. Indiana at 21 and 12. And it will go back to Purdue. In the game against Alabama, of course, Reggie King, only 6'6", was completely overmatched against Carroll. King will be playing in the East-West game this Friday night in Salt Lake with a great now, many other stars. Control. From the Garden of New York, this the 42nd NIT. Knight in his sport coat that is suitable for the first day of spring is motivating. Let there be no question about the fact he is making a point. And so far in the second half, his Hoosiers have had the momentum. Bobby Knight looking for his first NIT championship. He is a veteran of five previous NITs as an assistant coach at Army, as head coach of the cadets. The last time Knight was in the NIT, his Indiana team lost to Princeton. First round game back in 1972. 39-37, Purdue with the ball and the lead. 15 minutes left in the ball game. Walker looking for the shot up for Seasting, who fires. 
And Morris with the rebound. And a foul. Drake Morris trying to pop it back up, but hit by Butch Carter of Indiana. Uh, good release. Seasting a fine outside shooter. Catches the iron. Way up. Only 6'5". Morris, Drake some Morris. kind of jumper. Very quick jumper also. Here is Drake Morris out of East Chicago, Indiana. 73% foul shooter. That is his fifth point of the night. He's averaging eight per ball game. So Purdue with a three-point lead. And here's Woodson. Morris went for the steal. Woodson back out for Whitman. Indiana in the dark uniform, wearing the red trim with white. Whitman looking for Talbert. Back for Whitman. Off the turn. Talbert on the rebound. Excellent offensive rebound with the left hand. Whitman, the big guard, going up over the little people, challenging the big guy. Talbert coming from the weak side again with the left hand. Good touch. It is Purdue by one, 40 to 39. This is Seasting. Back out for Walker. It's tough to go all the way, but Brian Walker has to know Woodson has three fouls. I look for him to try to penetrate and get that fourth one. Hallman just went down as play continues. Now Hallman back to his feet. And hands for Walker. Hallman sets up down low. Here's the spinning jump. Five field goals, 10 points. And I don't think Lee Rose expected this kind of production out of Arnett Hallman. We had heard about his defense, but I'm equally impressed with his offense. Purdue by three, 42, 39, 13 and a half left in the game. Harris Whitman. And Lembo says offensive foul. A charge call. Randy Whitman at 6'5 is, is really trying to exploit the fact that there are 6'1 guards trying to defend him, but he's really out of balance, and he's, he's, he's forcing the advantage. And, of course, they're playing good position defense, and the nice thing for the Purdue guards is they know if anybody gets by him, there's a big guy back there with 22 on his chest, and he makes you look good. Number 11, substitution, Ken Edmondson. I should say Keith Edmondson coming back on, a freshman out of San Antonio, Texas. Three-point lead for the Boilermakers of Purdue. And now Seasting in the backcourt with Edmondson. The alley-oop. Morris went short. Morris again. Stayed right after it. Didn't get discouraged. Good offensive rebounder. Indiana a little timid that time. Normally they make you pay for that second shot. Purdue now by five. 44-39. Here's Carter. Yes. Butch Carter with his fourth field goal has eight. And Purdue leads 44 to 41. He's had some big games. Biggest was 20 against Minnesota, so he can stick it. This is Hallman out deep, bringing Tolbert with him. Nice pass. Oh, go very Carroll. Lepo says the basket counts, but a foul is called on Carroll. I'll tell you, a brave man drew a charge in there. A brave man. That is power. And we'll be right back after messages from your local station. Remaining on the game, and Purdue leads Indiana 46 to 41. And the first of the doubleheader here at the Garden, the game for third place, Alabama defeated Ohio State 96 to 86. Reggie King of Alabama had 21, although he was only five for 15 from the floor. Alabama center Eddie Phillips had 14 rebounds, 18 points. Kelvin Ramsey led Ohio State with 24. Joe Barry Carroll, who has shown signs of coming alive here in the second half, coming off that 42-point effort on 16 for 19 from the floor on Monday night against Alabama. He now has six field goals for 12 after the slow start. Randy Whitman took that charge from the big guy, and it's unusual for a freshman. He leads the team in minutes played. If he takes many more of those, that's one stat he's going to lose. There's Carter using glass. 
And that charging foul by Carroll was his third personal foul, so he and Woodson each have three. We have 12 minutes left in the game, and Purdue up by three, 46 to 43. This is Edmondson from long range. And rebounded by Indiana's Landon Turner. They try to break, but the Boilermakers got back. Woodson throws back out. Whitman and Carter at the guards. This is Woodson, had a notion. Back for Whitman, quick release jump. Purdue now in a 2-3 zone. Whitman is very good at this. Not only does he use his 6-5, but he takes it right to the front of that zone, and he makes somebody commit. Then he gives it with a pass. He doesn't take it to the side with the dribble, which shortens the zone slide. A smart, smart guard for a freshman. Oh, pretty move off the boards by Drake Morris. Likes to use the glass. His fourth field goal has nine at all. And Purdue with a three-point lead, 48 to 45. Third meeting of the season between these two teams. In Big Ten conference play, they split. Pretty pass. Nice dish off from Woodson. And Landon Turner now with 13 points, Indiana within one. Purdue switched back to a man for man that time. Whitman again for a freshman outstanding. Diagnosed it, it went right to the triple stack and got a good shot. Carroll with the step and he is fouled. He was double teamed. Saw the swarming defense of Indiana's Bobby Knight. He was wearing two red jerseys that time and there's Whitman coming in from the weak side. Good power play to get the ball in the middle. One of the keys to being a good offensive player is you got to get free and you got to get the ball. Give credit to Purdue. Their structure is good. Whether it's a one guard front or a two guard front, they manage to get the ball in there. He comes to get it and he knows what to do with it. Number 23, Mike Scare says come on, replacing Drake Morris who leaves with nine. Landon Turner committing that last foul, his second. And here is Joe Barry Kyle, 65% foul shooter. And he is now one for three tonight. Carroll with 13 points. Crowd of 14,889 here for the finals of the NIT at Madison Square Garden. Purdue by two, 49 to 47. Ten and a half left in the ball game. Woodson. Back out for Whitman. Hallman and Woodson, great matchup. Hallman is really tenacious. Foul committed by Edmondson. For Keith Edmondson, that is his first. It was Arnett Hallman who did an excellent job on Larry Bird, holding Bird to 22 points. In fact, 10 of those uh, points on free throws. Bird was only six out of 17 from the floor. jump it up so a combination of Holman and Turner and they will jump it up at the Indiana end a total NIT attendance of better than 261 thousand capped off by tonight just under 15 that's a good way for Ken Norton to go out the long athletic director at Manhattan is retiring this year. Of course, he was an outstanding coach, successful teams. And I remember reading as a young coach about the clock offense by Kenny Norton. He's been good for basketball. Ryan Walker overshooting. And they let it go out of bounds. So Indiana will take over. Purdue by two, 49 to 47. And pressure by Edmondson. Carter looking for help. And now feeds Whitman. Here's Tolbert. Back out for Connor. And Woodson. Well, Mike Woodson continues to have difficulty finding the range. Has four field goals for eight. That's been it. Arnett Holman with his sixth field goal. And a 51-47 Purdue lead. We have nine minutes left in the game. Whitman and Carroll with a good rebound. Keeping it away from Turner. Purdue's playing very steady. Indiana getting good shots, but not many second shots. A big guy is controlling. 
Jerry Seasting getting set to come back on for Purdue. A region foul. Ray Tobin leaning in, and now a timeout has been called. Let's pause a moment for these messages. 8.53 left in the ball game. Purdue by four. As you look at Mike Woodson, he's been averaging better than 21 per ball game this season. He's come on fast, Buck, after an early season slump. And Bobby Knight says he does not get his due. Should be an All-American. Tonight has had his problems. Only two for 10 from the floor in the first half. Hit a couple early second half, but uh, still not a usual good shooting performance by Woodson. And give some credit to Purdue. They are playing good D. I pointed out earlier that they did lead the Big Ten in defense. That's always a funny statistic, but they do play it. Art Carroll tried to make the move and was bottled up the foul call. Butch Carter helping out on Joe Barry Carroll. Commits his third. We have three apiece on Carter and Tolbert. And for Purdue, three on Carroll. Woodson also with three. Carroll is one for four from the foul line. Has 13 points. Looks good. Nice release. Joe Barry, all Big Ten, third team All-American. And the Associated Press ratings. He has been off from the line. A five-point Purdue lead, 52 to 47. Here's Whitman played tight by Walker. Now Woodson. Whitman able to get it down low. That forced by Carter rejected, but Indiana able to recapture Woodson with uh, Arnett Holman all over Mike Woodson. Carroll also, as we suggested, is playing much more aggressively in the second half. All right, Colbert off the double team. Makes the move and hits. Oh, beautiful move. He now has 12 and Purdue with a three-point edge, 52 to 49. Willing inside, Tolbert didn't get a lot of height from the floor, but he arced the ball up over the big guy. Soft touch. Seasting back in the lineup in the backcourt with Walker. This is Walker angling in. Tipped by Walker. And Walker again lost the handle. Taken off by Whitman of Indiana. I think it was a good block. The hand on the ball is part of the ball, and that's a call that's missed a lot. Here's Carter. And Watson. Rebounded by Holman. I'm sure Lee Rose is looking at that clock. Seven and a half minutes, only a three-point lead, and he's saying Woodson hasn't found his game. He's got to be concerned because that guy can explode if he ever gets the touch going. He has been red hot recently. He's been averaging better than 26 a ball game the last few weeks. Scarce down low for Carroll. And rebounded by Tolbert. Indiana with it, trailing by three. 52 to 49. Potter for Woodson. Back out for Carter. And here's Whitman. Stripped by Walker, but kept alive by Carter. Very quick hands by Walker. He and Seasting really hustle out there. They pressure the ball on the shooter, and they still get back inside the help. We have six and a half left in the game. And Woodson off the spin. Yes. He just keeps putting it up. A thoroughbred will do it. He won't get discouraged. He now has five field goals for 10. Purdue by one, 52 to 51. And look out away from the ball. They continue playing as Walker went down, hit by Tolbert. One of those no harm, no foul situations. Walker trying to set a little crossing guard screen and Tolbert would have none of it, which is surprising with his foul situation. He drilled him. Now number 12, Steve Walker, a junior out of Lebanon, Indiana, has come on. So Steve Walker and brother Brian Walker now in that Purdue backcourt. Indiana by, down by one, 52 to 51. Now less than six left in the ball game. for Woodson and a foul. It is Brian Walker committing his second. 
Harris down inside. Not much room. Carter trying to turn and protect the ball. Walker gets a piece of it, tries to stay after, which he should do, but he got some arm. Good call. And a timeout has been called. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters and Howard David at Madison Square Garden in New York. Two of the richest races in harness racing. As a matter of fact, the two richest races. The Meadowlands Place on July 19th, the Woodrow Wilson Pace on August the 1st. They are each $750,000 races. Purdue by one, 52 to 51. 540 left in the ball game. All Big Ten matchup here at the Garden. To get here, Purdue beats Central Michigan, Dayton, Old Dominion, and Alabama all at home in Lafayette, Indiana. Indiana with victories over Texas Tech and Alcorn State. They drew a bye into the semis, and Monday night beat Ohio State 64 to 55. We have been close right throughout. Neither club leading by more than six. Off the spin, we get the travel call on Turner. Purdue is playing a combination defense. Steve Walker, whose major contribution to Purdue is defense, has replaced Hallman and dogging Woodson, and he's doing a heck of a job. The, the pressure here, of course, the big guy makes you do funny things. The help from the top by Seasting, and it's a little one, two, three step, and it's a good call. Off the turnover, it is Purdue ball. Walker down low for Carroll. And we got a foul. Lembo says it's number 32, Landon Turner. And that's his third. Purdue working on the perimeter. Walker looking and feeding down inside before the big guy ever gets a chance to score. A little touch foul with some of the ones that they've been calling in there, which nearly drew blood. That one surprised me. By number 45, Arnett Hallman is back in. And here is Carroll, who is two for six from the foul line. He is a 65% foul shooter. 42 points on Monday night against Alabama. One and one, not able to take advantage. Third and two. <laughs> At the Big Ten's a football conference, that's certainly exhibit A. Scooby-Doo, they call him, huh? Scarce. No, it was Holman on the bottom of that pile. Scarce was the outside receiver. <laughs> Just under five minutes left in the game, and Purdue by one. And both coaches said, yes, it will be a low-scoring, high-intensity type ball game, and that is just what we have had. Now Scarce controls the tap for Purdue. Seasnick back for Scarce. Walker. And Seasnick. Seasting looking for the jumper, can't find it. Holman and Walker. Walker can't penetrate in any deeper. He gets down inside the broken circle, and it's too close to now pass. Now having a problem with the clock. The clock has not been running. And now here's Bobby Knight screaming about it. The clock had not uh, been in operation for the last 15, 20 seconds. I'm guessing, but I believe about 15 or 20 seconds. No one noticed it, and now Knight over to the scorer's table. Bobby Knight's been asserting himself right along. <laughs> oh, oh, does he want attention right there? And he deserves it. Amazingly, I guess he's the only fellow in the building that saw the clock wasn't running. His blood pressure must register about nine on the Richter scale. Time is now set. Four minutes, 48 seconds remaining in the game. Well, they only moved it, what, uh, seven, eight seconds? It appears to be a bit more. However, both Lee Rose of Purdue and uh, Bobby Knight say all right. A one point lead for Purdue, 52 to 51. This is scarce. Watch by Connor. Out for Walker. Now Seasting from way out and rebounded by Woodson. Both Holman and Carroll are very active down in there in a double post. It's going to be tough to keep that ball from going in. Indiana looks just a little tired. The access to the postman by a pass has been a little bit easier. All 
all the big guns have had their difficulties today. Carroll, Seasting, and Woodson. Shooting well under their usual percentages. Purdue now straight 2-3. Palma now is away from Woodson. And we now have four minutes left of the game. Indiana with the ball, trailing by one. Woodson checks the clock. Purdue by one, 52 to 51. Carter, watched by Walker. Whitman and Woodson. Three and a half left. From the front of that zone, the Purdue guards not only have good quickness, but they can be a little brazing. As we pointed out before, with the zone defense behind them, and Carroll in particular, you can take a few chances. Whitman, Seasting comes out on him. Here's Connor. This is Indiana style. They're in no hurry. Despite the fact that uh, Purdue is ahead, Indiana's controlling the tempo, and it's an interesting ploy. I think Purdue perhaps likes to go a little bit more than Indiana. It'll be interesting to see whether Lee Rose, who is ahead, will come out and force the tempo a little bit. And you can hear a portion of the crowd reacting against the slowdown of Bobby Knight. Well, the question that's always asked now and in big games when coaches start to play these games, are they trying to keep from losing or are they trying to win? And I've seen these two men operate for a lot of years. I guarantee you they're doing everything they can to win. It may look a little strange, but they are trying to win. All right, you see the clock running down. Purdue by one, 52 to 51. The Boilermakers led by four at halftime, 29-25. Neither club has led by more than six. Purdue is waiting for a signal from Coach Lee Rose, who's on the sideline on one knee with his fist in the air, waiting for the cue, as if they were stage players. Now under two minutes left of the game. As Bobby Knight coaches from the bench, Rose along the sideline. Holman is back on Woodson. They're going man for man. Rose has made the decision to come out and play and not let Bobby Knight go down to the last shot and the possibility of beating him on that last shot. Minute and a half left. Indiana with the ball, down by one. Here's Woodson. And Whitman. Good weak side defense. The freshman scarce picked it off, anticipated a beautiful play for a rookie. A minute two left from the Garden of New York. This the full left in the ball game. Purdue by one, 52-51. Here's a big play. Carter trying to make a diagonal pass. The freshman, Mike Scarce, picks it off clean. That was a tough pass, a dangerous pass. Even though Purdue has come out man for man, they really didn't come out in full pressure. Both Lee Rose of Purdue and Bobby Knight said you will get a low-scoring ball game. Rose said when you play each other, twice, three times a year, there are no secrets. And uh, that's what it's been. Purdue indicated that they might go to a four-corner attack. They had spread the offense out. I'm out, Indiana. Bobby Knight doubles up with his timeouts. Oh, boy, the wheels are spinning. If you're thinking overtime, Indiana is 2-1 and one in overtime with wins over Kentucky and Wisconsin. They lost at Ohio State. Purdue, of course. Oh. All right, thank you, Buck. Capped off by tonight's crowd of just under 15,000. A minute two remaining in the game. Purdue leading by one, 52 to 51. As both clubs make their way back on court. Both teams have four timeouts. Two fine chess players are at it. Rose and Knight have been here before in big games. This should be interesting. Indiana already over the foul limit. Purdue with five team fouls as Seasting moves down. And this is Brian Walker. We have 40, 
five seconds remaining. Holman back for Seasting. Purdue leading it 52 to 51. 30 seconds remaining. Indiana has a tough time because the quickness in Seasting and Walker in particular is going to be very difficult. Indiana's big, strong, but about a half a step slower than Purdue. All right, Butch Carter committed that foul to his fourth. And Lee Rose looking on as his big man, seven foot one, Joe Barry Carroll, goes to the line. Oh, Barry Carroll, one and one situation. He is two for seven from the line, a 65% foul shooter. We have 21 seconds remaining. Joe Barry with 14 points this evening. And rebounded by Indiana. Foul. What a turnaround. I don't think it was a percentage foul, but Carroll did miss it. He was the obviously the high priority guy. Indiana almost tipped that ball back in, and Woodson, of course, trying to make his way up the floor, is fouled by Holman. We have 16 seconds remaining for Due by one. That the sixth team foul by Purdue, so they are one away from the limit, and Indiana has called for a timeout. Lee Rose, his club with a one-point lead, 52-51, 16 seconds remaining, but it will be Indiana ball. That probably was a good foul. At least it gave Purdue a chance to set its defense with 16 seconds. They were very vulnerable, trying to get back to stop Indiana, but I doubt Indiana would have taken it all away. They probably would have called it. And now the wheels are going. <laughs> the chess game is on. Once again, a double timeout called as Bobby Knight has called for time. Indiana has two times out. Indiana now with two timeouts remaining. Purdue with four left. I thought that usually in that situation, the coach who wants to look at the defense, and he really didn't give Purdue a chance to uh, to get into the defense. I don't think he knows any more before he called that timeout than he did after. More college basketball coming up on Friday night. Bucky and I will be out in Salt Lake City, Utah, for the East-West Coaches All-Star Game. One of the gentlemen who was awarded the Academic All-America Award, Jim Spinarco, will be on the East squad. James Bailey, Reggie King, Sidney Moncrief, just a few of the stars in the East-West All-Star Game coming up on Friday night. Nancy Lopez, defending champion of this Coca-Cola LPGA Golf Classic Sunday, May 20th, over many of these Mizlou television network stations. Well, this is the first time that two teams from the same conference have reached the NIT final. The second time that two teams from the same state have done it back in 1958. Xavier of Ohio beat Dayton to take the NIT. And it has come down to the final seconds between the Boilermakers of Purdue and the Hoosiers of Indiana. Setting the scene again. That is the official time in the uh, left-hand corner that you will see. 16 seconds left. Purdue leading by one. And following that second consecutive timeout called by Bobby Knight, it will be Indiana ball. And another timeout has been called. Yeah. Bobby Knight calling another. So he now has one timeout left. How do you figure this strategy? Well, it's it's a little strange because he's got Purdue on the defense and he's got the psych on. He's still drawing plays on the floor. But I got to believe at, at this point in the game, he's he knows what he's going to do. And I, I can't imagine Lee Rose is tired of talking to those guys. <laughs> he's had three times to tell them, hey, don't foul. Put a hand in that shooter's face and no second shots. They must not get a defensive or an offensive rebound. There really is very little else to say at this point. 16 seconds left for due by one. 52-51, but uh, the two coaches are still chatting. Well, Lee Rose has got to be a little bit concerned now because I think Indiana is going to go toward Mike Woodson. He's the guy that they look to in the clutch, even though he hasn't had a great night. And the Holman-Woodson matchup, I think Purdue will go man for man. That should be a gem. That's the way these games are supposed to finish. As a former coach, I don't know if coaches get paid overtime, although they deserve it in many cases. 
they're going to get this beautiful piece of hardware, the Toyota Coaches Trophy, which will be awarded at the completion of tonight's game, if the game ever should end. Indiana now with one timeout left. Purdue has them stocked up. They have four remaining. Do you think Lee Rose will call a timeout? Why not? They're cheaper by the dozen, aren't they? It'll be Randy Whitman putting it in play at three-quarter court. Indiana down by one. Here's Connor. Whitman. And the big gun, Woodson, back out with eight seconds. Connor forces and hits. Indiana takes a one-point lead. Timeout call by Purdue with four seconds left. It wasn't a good shot, and I think he might have even got hit a little bit. And it hit a lot of iron, but it doesn't matter. Purdue now looking at a one-point deficit, and Lee Rose has a point. It was good defense. I mean, Purdue was right on him. This wasn't a real good shot. His shoulders weren't even square when he went up for it. But he turned a lot of iron, and it counts. And now Purdue has to come from behind with four seconds, and that's a lot of time. They can do it, especially with the big guy and the long pass. We're going to get another look at that clutch jumper by Butch Carter. The ball went inside. Woodson couldn't make a play. He was covered. He punched out. Carter looked, didn't pull the trigger, thought better of it, looked like he was going to pass, turned in the air, and Seasting was right on him. Butch Carter is a six-foot-five junior out of Middletown, Ohio, averaging eight and a half of all game. That was his sixth field goal. He now has 12 points at Al. Lee Rose talking it over with his Boilermakers, who are faced down by one with four seconds left. Yesterday at a press conference, Bobby Knight told Jerry Seasting, he said, I don't care if you go to graduate school as long as you don't go to Purdue, because I've seen enough of you for four yeah. years. Well, for Seasting thus far today, only three field goals, six points. It has not been one of his better ball games, although, in all fairness, they, they denied the ball from him. He hardly saw it. Lee Rose has the timeouts, trying to bring it the length of the floor with four seconds. If Indiana will permit it, which I doubt, they may try to go to half court, call timeout. If they can do that, I think they'll put the ball in Seasting's hands, and he will look for Carroll, and if he doesn't have it, he'll put it up. They really don't have time to refer it to a committee, but I think Indiana will put enough pressure on so that they can't get the position at half court. Purdue has three timeouts left. Indiana has one. Four seconds left. And yes, Bobby Knight has called another timeout, and that's his final timeout. Well, that time, Indiana did not go man for man. They put Tolbert all the way back to protect against the long pass. With the timeout, let's pause. We'll be back after this brief pause. Indiana 53, Purdue 52, four seconds left. Marv Albert with Bucky Waters and Howard David for Madison Square Garden. Our statistician tonight, Saul Wildwood, as we get set for the final seconds. One of the things Indiana has to be careful of now, particularly with long passes, which is a high probability, and that is that they don't push off. It's a very natural tendency on a long high pass to begin to nudge to get position, and that would be disastrous. Bobby Knight directing his club defensively as Arnett Holman gets set to throw it in. And now throws in for Walker. And the timeout is called. No time expired. Bobby and I want to know why. Larry Lembo explains it's very possible. The reason it is possible, the way the scoreboard clock operates, there are several increments which in, within each digital. And although the clock did start, they might be very close to ticking off another second, although it shows as four, but it might be very close to three seconds, and Knight says, yes, I accept that. And he did it graciously. I, I would say this during this period, during this whole week, 
Purdue and Indiana, the coaches, the teams, everyone, there's been a very positive atmosphere. And I think that's to their credit. Having come from and known some big rivalries, particularly when you're so close together, they've just been gentlemen and very complimentary to each other. And believe me, that's hard to do. And we thank the uh, sports information director at Purdue, Tom Shoup, Indiana SID, Kit uh, Klingelhofer. It will be a very quick second, moving to three seconds left. And that's the story. Indiana in a back and forth ball game by one off that long jumper, a four shot by Butch Carter. 53 52 for the Hoosiers. Looking to upset the Boilermakers of Purdue. And it would be the first NIT victory for Bobby Knight. Well, Bobby Knight's going to be man for man. And I'm sure what he's telling his players is no foul. We do not want to send them to the line. Make them work to get the pass. Force them as far away from the basket as you can. No foul. And for goodness sake, hit that defensive board. No second shots. I think Seastain will get the ball, and he's going to look for Carroll. If he can't find Carroll, he's going to put it up. And those two have been dynamite all year for the Boilermakers. Once again, Hallman will throw it in. There's Seastain. Not able to hit, and that's it. Indiana has defeated Purdue by the score of 53 to 52, and the Hoosiers of Indiana have won the NIT. A mad scene on the court at Madison Square Garden. Indiana supporters congratulating Bobby Knight and his Hoosiers. They have defeated Purdue 53 to 52. Join us this Friday night for the East-West Coaches game for Marv Albert and Bucky Waters. Howard David Sake, so long from Madison Square Garden. Paid for and provided by the more than 1,000 Big Boy restaurants nationwide. Big Boy restaurants feature full table service, attractive surroundings, and a variety of quality food with something good for everyone. Genie, automatic garage door picker upper by Alliance, featuring Sequencer, the computer controlled brain, and Cryptar 2 digital controls with 3,000 codes now available. Remember, if it doesn't say Alliance, it's not a Genie. Show off your spirit with the AJD College Cap. Check with your local sporting goods dealers for your favorite college team. The AJD College Cap.